Hey guys, Hafta here again. So last year I made a video about using machine together with FL Studio and in that video I failed to mention a couple of things that I discovered while using it with FL Studio for a while now. So in this video I want to highlight five of those things that will really help you set up your workflow uh, properly from the start. So the first thing that I wanted to show you is that you can actually, as you can see here on my screen, machine is pretty big. You can actually resize it. Now you cannot do this the normal way to just simply drag. You actually have three sizes to choose from. So you can put it into a small mode if you want to keep it on the screen, for example, at at all times. This is kind of what I do now. I just put it in small mode and drag it down to the bottom of my workspace. Now, you if you don't have a, a really big monitor, even this might not be an option. So what I suggest is thinking about getting another monitor and this is actually what I wanted to do with, with this workflow. I want to put my machine on a separate monitor so it doesn't take any of the screen space here. But this can help you set it up like if you don't feel that you have an, enough space on it so you can just put it in medium if you want to keep it like this or you can just keep it large and drag it to another monitor. I think that would be the best option. The second thing I wanted to talk about, by default, FL Studio plugins have only two gigabytes of dedicated RAMs. And what that means is if you, for example, start loading contact libraries into your machine, this will introduce problems really fast because what's gonna start to happen is your FL Studio is gonna start to freeze you're gonna have hiccups and all that it happened to me I didn't know what was going on and I discovered by digging through the manuals and shit that you have to put your machine essentially into a bridged mode what that means is that your machine is gonna run in a separate process because normally it just runs in the same process with FL Studio so if it starts bugging the FL Studio starts bugging this way if you have any hiccups it's going to consider it a separate process and your FL Studio session will still work. Theoretically, that is. Let me show you how to do that. So you go here to this, uh, this gear icon here. And normally this is your plugin mode. And here you can set things up the way you want. Normally it's going to open into, into settings. You click here on processing. And this make bridged is going to be turned off. So you just turn it on and it, your machine is going to reset. And it's going to open it in, in another process. It's not going to make any difference difference for your workflow as far as you can tell but as soon as you cross those two gigabytes of memory it's gonna be really really helpful and that's especially if you have like really big projects and you start doing things inside machine a lot make sure that it's bridged here okay since we are already here I wanted to talk about uh, machine outputs so what you can essentially do machine by default has 16 outputs and it would be really good if it had more, but this is what we have so far. So what that means is that you can connect your machine, you can connect it to your mi mixer essentially. So the way I have set it up here is that I connected my machine to, to, the, last, um, to the last 16 uh, tracks on my mixer, right? So what that means is that you can go into your machine and for example, for this uh, sound right here, so this is my kick. So I can connect it to my FL Studio and the way to do that is you go here, make sure you're under audio. When you click here, all of these external 16 outputs will be your outputs that you chose here. Okay, so machine is going to output everything by default to, to this first channel here, okay? Sorry, maybe you cannot see that. Hold on, let me put it like this. Your machine will go to whatever you specify here in the first place. So if you don't pick anything here, if you just say group, it's going to send this to 110 ultimately when it's done processing everything in machine. Uh, and these other things here, 111, you can use them from this menu right here. So if you go to your, like normally it's here, you click here and you click output and you click this thing here. And now you can send this sound directly to your mixer, right? So 111 would be the next one, right? 
and then you can go here and you can send this one to the external tree so now you would have your kick and snare and remember that you can do this in advance so essentially you can save it as a template and it's gonna remember those now you might not want to do that because if you do this you're not gonna be able to drag and drop things which is a really handy workflow when working with machine so let's say I play this let me speed this up a little bit all right, now let's say I want to record something. Let's say I want to drag and drop this into my FL Studio. Machine has a nifty feature here, which makes it possible to just click here, drag it out, and it's gonna create a file, and now you can put it here. Now. As you can see, this file is now empty. The reason being that machine exports these files from within. Like you saw, we just took this sound. We said we want to route it to the external too. So now it's not going to go through machine. So essentially machine gets nothing and it exports nothing. So if you want to use this feature versus the, the other one, so you have to decide for yourself which workflow is best for you. Do you want to drag your things out of machine into FL Studio? This is what I do. This is what makes sense for me because then I have all my files here and I don't have to worry about, oh, what is here in the in the song mode. So normally like machine and FL Studio would sync up as you can see the song mode in, in machine and uh, the song mode essentially in the FL Studio would sync up. But then you would have to worry, you would have two playlists to worry about like uh, arrangements and stuff. So what I do is I just completely ignore this option. It's nice to see that you have it. Normally you just keep everything connected. Every sound should be connected to your group and that's that means it's gonna be able to, to export. If we try to do the same thing now by drag and dropping, as you can see we now have it here and I just click on another pattern so it doesn't play twice. And that was really easy, like it exported it. And by the way, this file needs to be exported somewhere. What you do is you go in here and you define where you want it to be exported. Every, so every time you drag and drop into FL Studio, it's going to be exported in a default location. What you want to probably do is go here and set your own user directory. It's going to be marked standard user directory and what you do is you click here and you pick another file, another folder where you want to save it and the machine is going to export it by default into that location. So later on if you need to find those files you can do it easily from there, right? Yeah, I mentioned uh, that you can make a template. So well, when setting it up, like I have it already set up the way I want it and it's already saved into a template. So whenever I load FL Studio, it's going to automatically load machine into it and I'm going to be able to start working right away, right? I would highly recommend you to to create a template that's going to work for you. Keep in mind that you still can link your machine to your mixer and be able to, to export these things. Unfortunately, it's just gonna be able to, so that's why I'm using one channel here for machine, as you can see on my mixer track. And I have it connected to my MIDI controller here, so I can just quickly, if I want to mute my machine, so anything that's coming from machine is gonna mute. So I can just do this, and now we don't get any sound. So that's, that's a nifty thing that you can do if you have a MIDI controller. You can just set it up from the start. So you just drag this thing. So you essentially mute machine and then you can just play this and it's not gonna introduce sounds from your machine. What would happen if we had machine on with, with our project, it would play these. Uh, so for example, we have this pattern in machine here. So if I go back, you would get distorted clipping and stuff like that whatever you specify here as the first as the first channel will be the channel that's machine gonna be sent to and the way routing works in machine all of these sounds are connected to groups and then groups are sent to the master channel and then the master channel is sent to whatever the first channel um, the first channel in this list is so you're gonna get it here 
So if you don't want to listen to it, you just want to work in FL Studio, you just drag it down and now you don't get any sound, okay? Another thing that wasn't possible, or I, at least I thought it wasn't possible, was to play your uh, FL Studio project from, from your machine controller. When I got, first got machine, machine, I played with a lot of settings and I could have sworn it was possible, uh, and then at one point it just stopped doing that. It stopped playing and I didn't know what was going on. I just thought I was f fucking going insane. It turns out that it actually is possible. So when I press play here now, you can see that it plays my my project. And I'm still, by the way, I'm still in, in machine mode. I'm not in, in the MIDI mode. So normally from MIDI mode, you can do whatever. Like you can link it and make stuff do whatever you want. But when you're in machine mode, you normally cannot do that or I didn't, couldn't do it and the reason why is when you go into your controller editor here you have this thing called host transport control and if you turn this off or on I don't know if you can see it it's gonna enable or disable the buttons uh, here the stupid thing that when you turn this thing on it's also gonna disable the erase button for some reason the erase button is treated as a transport control I have no idea why and now you cannot erase stuff if you're uh, used to working uh, in machine and erasing things now you're not gonna be able to use this button because this button now sends messages to FL Studio so I hope they fix it it's it's highly requested on the forum I saw there there was like topics on this if you have any questions leave them in the comments I will try to answer them I will try to help you if I can because using two different uh, softwares like this can be really quirky and that's why I wanted to make this video it's like an addendum to the original one that I made if you want to watch more about templates uh, in FL Studio I made a video I'm gonna link it up in the in the in the corner uh, I'm also gonna put the video the last video from the for the machine in FL Studio I did last year so you can check that out as well and yeah um, I really hope I helped you comment whatever you want to know and see you in another video bye